Today on The Joy of Editing, we'll get a look at the new selection brush tool found in Photoshop. Stay tuned. Welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, we're going to look at the new selection brush tool in Photoshop. You're going to find it in your toolbar, and this is it right here. You see this icon right here? Whenever you install the latest version of Photoshop, and this version is 25.11.0, so make sure you have the latest version of Photoshop. After you've installed that new version of Photoshop, the first time you open it up and run Photoshop, you should get a message up on the screen asking you where you want to put the new selection brush. I chose to create a new tool group and keep custom toolbar, but you have choices here. You could decide how you want to do it. And then after I did that, I went ahead and came to the toolbar. You see the three dots right here. If you right click and click on edit toolbar, you're going to see your toolbar here. On the left is the toolbar. On the right are extra tools. As you can see, I don't have any extra tools here, but you may. And you might even find that new selection brush over here, which you'd have to click and drag it over to the left side because these are the tools that will show inside of the toolbar. And as I said, mine was in a group with the adjustment brush and the selection brush. And if you have a brush in a group and you want to take it out, you can just click on it and drag it up out like that. You see that? Like if I want this selection brush to go into this group, with the quick selection tool, I can just drag it and place it inside that group. But I don't want it there. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna drag it right up above my lasso tool because I like to keep all my selection brushes kind of all right there together. Now, if you'll notice the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool are all inside this same group. Let's say I want these all out of the group. So I'm gonna take the lasso tool and drag it up out of the group and now it's under the selection brush tool. And now I'll click and drag on the polygonal lasso tool and drag it out of the group. And now you'll notice the magnetic lasso tool is out because there was nothing left in that group. And you'll notice these all have the shortcut of L. And now that these lasso tools are where I want them, I can click done. And now you'll notice there's my new selection brush tool underneath it, the lasso, then the polygonal, and underneath that, the magnetic lasso tool. And then I have my object selection tool right here. And then my quick selection tool is right under that. Now, in case you're wondering, all of these lasso tools use the same shortcut key of L. This tool is selected right now. If I type L, nothing happens, but Here's how you can toggle through your tools. Hold your shift key down and type L. Right now, you'll notice I have the standard lasso tool selected. But notice, I'm going to hold my shift key down and type the shortcut of L. So here's shift and L. Notice it went to the polygonal. Shift and L, it goes to the magnetic. Shift and L, it goes back up to the new selection brush tool. So that's how you toggle through your tools. Shift plus the shortcut key of L. Now let's go ahead and dive right in and see what this new selection brush tool is all about, which I'm using right now. So basically what you do with this is you just paint on selections, just like that. You see that magenta overlay. Now, by the way, if you come up here, see the gear icon. If you click this right now, it's on the color fuchsia. This is a drop down. You could change it to say like orange or red, uh, whatever you like. I kind of like fuchsia the best because there's not too much fuchsia ever in an image. Yeah, occasionally you will get fuchsia in an image, but I like to pick a color that's not that often seen in an image. It makes more sense. I can tell what I'm selecting. The fuchsia overlay is representing the selected area. If you wanted to see the marching ants, all you need to do is click on any tool other than the selection brush. In other words, let me click on a brush tool. And now we can see the marching ants. Now, if I click on the selection brush tool, now we can see the overlay again. So that's kind of interesting. And by the way, to deselect a selection, you could come up here to select, click on deselect, or you could do a command or control D to deselect. And now you'll notice we no longer have a selection. And now I want you to notice up here in the toolbar, we have add and subtract. Right now, subtract is grayed out because I have not added anything yet. And we have opacity. And then we have the brush size right here. And if I click the drop down, we could change the size of the brush and the hardness here. But there are shortcut keys, which I feel 
are far easier to use, and I'll tell you what those are right now. The shortcut to make your brush larger or smaller or change your hardness is hold your control along with your Alt or Option key, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC, and then drag to the right to make the brush larger, to the left to make it smaller, and again, you're holding down the control along with the Alt or Option key, and then if you drag up, you'll make your brush softer at 0%. And then if you drag down, you'll make it hard up to 100% hardness. So up to soften, down to harden, to the right to make the brush larger, to the left to make it smaller. And again, the shortcut is Control along with Alt or Option. And then just drag left, right, up, or down. And also notice we have brush opacity. Right now it's at 100%. Now there are shortcuts here too. If you want like 50%, type your 5 key. And now when I paint, I'm painting at 50% opacity. Now if I lift my brush and paint again, I can increase that amount there. You see that? It'll incrementally increase as I keep painting over that, which can be very effective when making adjustments. So we have that. Now I'll type my zero key and paint again. This time I'll be painting at 100% opacity. If you want a minimal opacity, say like 10% or 20%, let's say 20%, type your two key. And now we have like 20% opacity. And again, to deselect these selections, let's do a command or control D to deselect. The same shortcuts apply to the selection brush tool that applied to the Photoshop brush tools. Now, I want you to notice after I added this selection here, now we do have subtract active. So if I click on subtract, I can subtract from this selection. And again, I could change the opacity, the brush size, the hardness, whatever we need to. I'll go back and click add again. And now let me go ahead and add to this selection. So right there, and let me just add down here. I'm just painting random areas just so you get an idea of how this new selection brush tool works. Now, I can just keep adding selections. I don't have to do anything but paint to add selections. If I was using a standard lasso tool, I'd have to hold the shift key down every time I drew a new selection onto the image. So this makes it a lot easier. I can just paint on new selections as needed. Now, for subtracting, rather than clicking on subtract, use the shortcut of option or alt and then you can just paint and subtract from any selection that you want just like that you see that so get used to using those shortcuts it'll make your life a lot easier now i don't want you to be confused you have to hold that option key down to stay in the subtract mode so i'm holding option as i'm subtracting by painting over that selection so as soon as i release the option or alt key I go back to add, and then I could start adding again if needed. Right now, you see these random selections as a fuchsia overlay color, but remember, if you click on any of the other tools other than the selection brush, like for instance, if I type my B key to get to my brush tool, now we can see the marching ants showing the areas that I have selected. And again, I can come and click on the selection brush tool, and now we can see those in an overlay, which is kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and do a command or control D to deselect my selections. And I want to show you something here. If I were to take a selection tool like the object selection tool, let me click on this. I'm in the rectangle mode. And what I'm going to do is drag a rectangle around this statue right here and select it. But here's something we can do. And this is a nice feature of this new selection brush. Any one of these selection tools, after you make a selection with them, and then you click on the new selection brush tool, you can see it as an overlay, which is kind of nice. And then you could see, do I need to refine this? For instance, if I zoom into this image, you can see it's missed an area right down here. So I can make the brush smaller because I'm on the selection brush, right? I can make it smaller. I'm at 100% opacity and I can just paint right on here and fix up that selection. So that could be very effective for doing things like that. And now that I have this selection, I could come down here to the bottom right hand side of the Photoshop interface, click here and let's click on curves. And then maybe what I can do is lighten up this statue. I'm just gonna click here and drag up on this curve. See, I can lighten up the statue 
and maybe darken down the shadows a little bit. And now I'm just going to use my TK combo panel. I'll click this button to fit this back to screen. Now look at that statue right there. I'm going to shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Now I'm going to show you another cool feature of this brush. If we make a circle like this and I close it off, it'll just fill inside it. Or I can make a square like this. It'll fill inside it. That's pretty neat. I'm going to do a command or control D to deselect that because what if I wanted to just lighten this area up or darken this area down a little bit? So what I could do is I could draw across here like this and like that and come back up and it fills that right in. And then I could output this to, let's say, a brightness contrast adjustment. And now let's say I want to darken that. I can darken that up a little bit just like that. So we can do things like that with a selection, give it a little bit more contrast maybe, and I think that looks pretty cool. I like that you can close off a circle, square, or any shape, and then it just fills in the shape. Now here's something it can't do, and I wish it could. For instance, if I could click here, I could hold my shift key down and click again. It'll make a straight line. Again, I'm holding my shift key down and clicking, still holding the shift key and clicking and drawing an area around like this but when i come up here it will not close off so that's a feature i think they need to add because now what i have to do is i could come on the inside of this and just paint without ever lifting the brush like that and now it'll fill the inner part so if they would make this work when you shift click when you finish off the selection that you've made i wish it would just do a fill in but for now you can just use the technique i just showed you i deselected my selections the last thing i want to show you is the new selection brush is great with generative fill and right now my contextual taskbar is open if yours isn't come up and click on window and then click on contextual taskbar and then it will come out onto the desktop and now let's say i want to add some pigeons along here so i'm just going to paint like this here here i'm using 100 percent opacity soft brush just going to paint along here and let's see if we can add some pigeons so i'm going to click on generative fill and type in pigeons and then i'll click generate and see what we get and there we can see some pigeons now you always get three variations. This is the first one. I'm gonna click this arrow to the right. Here's the second, and one more time, here's the third. And I think I like the third the best. And you may say, Dave, why do you want pigeons there? I don't know, I'm just trying to give you an example of what you can do. You can put pigeons, you could put people along there, you can do anything you want with generative fill. But it really works nice with the uh, selection brush, and I wanted to point that out to you for removing things, for adding things, whatever well that's the new selection brush in photoshop what do you think about it i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below and i do want to point out there is a free tk selection brush which does what the new photoshop brush does with this button right here this is for standard selections but it also gives you rectangle object selections as well as lasso object selections and you could do the same thing where you could view your selections with an overlay. I have videos on it, so you may want to check those out on my YouTube channel. Also, I have a link in the description below this video where you could pick up that free TK selection brush and check it out. I really enjoy it, and I think you'll like it too, so maybe give it a try. Well, there you go, everyone. That was the first look at the new selection brush found in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.